What's up guys, in this video you're going to learn the fastest way to learn how to design websites and apps in Figma and keep on improving. Let's go! Today we're going to get you up and running in Figma. We're going to design a website and an app in less than 20 minutes and it's really easy. We're going to go over every single step in the process. Figma is an amazing free design tool for designing websites and apps. Most of the world's biggest companies are using it and a lot of the top UX UI designers that I know also are switching to it. It's available for free over at figma.com on both Mac and PC as a web browser and as a desktop app. But this is where we're going to start. It's a template that's been made in Figma communities. It's available for free to download and you can change it however you want. I think this is the best way to start learning about how websites are designed because you can start with something that someone's already made, see all the tips and tricks that they use and change it and start from there. Once you've logged into Figma, in the top left hand corner, hit explore community. Then type in dashboard free UI kit. The top left result is called dashboard UI kit by Bruno. Double click this. I'll also leave the link in the description in case you can't find it. On the profile page for the UI kit, hit duplicate in the top right hand corner. This will then create a copy of this in your own files. If you hit the name at the top, you can then type in whatever you want once you double click. And then this is your own version with your own name. On the left hand side, go down to dashboard free. And this is the dashboard that we're going to be working with. Now we can start to change things. The first thing we're going to do is create your own logo. Move your cursor over to the book icon in the top left hand corner, click and hit delete. Then open new browser tab and go to iconfinder.com. This is an amazing website where we can find lots of royalty free icons that you can use in whatever project you want. For this tutorial, we're going to search game. On the left hand side, select free. Then underneath it, select no backlink. That means we can use it straight away in our project and not have to worry about anything. Then select the icon that you want to use. I'm choosing this pad because I think it's cool. Then when you select it, you want to choose SVG. SVG is a vector type of graphic, which means that it looks great at whatever size and we can change elements within it within our design file. Now we're going to grab our SVG file and drag it over into our Figma file. As you can see, it's too large. I'm going to click on the corner, the little white square. Then I'm going to shift drag to make it smaller. By holding shift, you constrain the proportions of it so it doesn't go out of shape. And then I'm going to position it exactly where I want. Now that our logo is in place, we're going to change the color. But for our website, we need a color scheme. Head on over to color.adobe.com. This is an amazing website where you can find different color schemes for websites, which is a palette of five different colors. And by keeping it within this palette, the whole website is honed and looks great. Head on up to explore and then type in game. Then choose whatever color scheme you like. For this example, I'm going to choose this one over here with the pad and the blue tones. I think this is really nice. Now I'm going to take a screenshot of it and drag it over into my design file and put it just above the dashboard. Now we're going to change the color of the logo. So select the pad icon and then on the right hand side, go down to where it says selection colors and click on the colored square. Then click the eyedropper tool and go up to where you've pasted in your color theme and select the color. This will then sample the color and actually change the color of the icon. You'll also see a code in each colored square. This is called a hex code. You can also type this code into where you select colors and it will update it. We're also going to do the same for the page select on the left hand side. So select the square behind home, then sample a color again from the color chart and do the same for the icon but maybe choose a different color out of the swatches this time, just for a bit of contrast. The next thing we're going to do is add some illustrations in. So select the illustration at the bottom of the page and hit delete. Then head on over to undraw.co. This is an unbelievable website where all the illustrations are open source and free and you can use them in whatever projects you want. So hit browse and then hit search. Then type in game. And you can choose whatever illustration you want, but I like this one called Ninja. So hit the illustration and then download the SVG. Then bring the SVG across into your project and resize. This SVG is a little tricky. So I'm going to ungroup by right clicking and clicking ungroup. Then you can select the bits that you don't want. So I don't want this gray background, then hit delete. Then I'm going to reselect everything and you can right click and click group 
or shift command G and that will group it again and then position it properly. The next thing I'm going to do is change the colors. So I'm going to hit the illustration, then on the right hand side in the color select, I'm going to select see all colors. Then I can see all the colors used in the illustration and I can select the square that I don't want and then I can use the selector again to choose the color I want. I'm going to keep within the color theme for this. The next thing we're going to change is the hero component. That's the main container at the top of the page with the illustration. I'm going to select the illustration, I'm going to delete it. Then I'm going to head back over to Undraw and choose another suitable illustration, download the SVG and then drag it across, resize it and I'm going to change the colors as well. I'm also going to change the background color of this component. So I'm going to select the green, go on over to color, select the square, then I'm going to use the eyedropper again to select for my color theme at the top. I'm also going to do the same thing for the button. I'm going to select the background of the button and choose a color with my color picker. Then I'm going to choose a different one of the blues, maybe a dark blue this time. Now we're going to make a cool animation for the button. So select the text and the background of the button and either copy and paste above your artboard or alt drag up. This will make a copy of it. Then you want to right click and select frame selection. Now change the background color of the button. This will be our hover state. Now go back to the original button and go to prototype mode in the top right. One thing I forgot to mention, make sure the text and the background of your button are a group. Then select the little circle on the button and drag it over to the frame that you've just created. Then in the top right, change the mode to while hovering. Make sure to click open overlay. This will make sure it appears above your current button and then change it to manual position. Now if you go to preview mode, you can see as you hover over the button, it pulls in the other layer on top of it, making a really cool animation. The next thing we're going to do is pull in some images for the popular section. Now head on over to unsplash.com. This is another website that I use all the time. All of the images are royalty free and you can use them for free on your project. For this example, I've typed in game. Choose the image that you want, then right click and copy it. Then go back to your file, double click on the box you want to paste it in and command V or control V on a PC. This will paste your image into the box. Now, if you want to change the corners on the box, at the moment they're rounded, and I feel like for this design, I want to go for more of a square feel. Select the box, and in the top right-hand corner, choose the bottom right number. That number references to the amount of roundedness on the corner. So I'm going to select it to zero. That will make the corners perfectly square. Now in your design, go through and do this on every single box. Finally, in this section, I'm going to double click the text go in and change it to make it make more sense to the websites I'm creating. For the next section, I'm going to design this as featured gamers. So I want some gamer profile images. Head on over to Unsplash and choose an image that you want. Then copy and paste it into the file. Next, I think this outside circle would make more sense as a blue. So again, I'm going to choose a color for my color palette. Then I'm going to repeat this across all the images and change the names to realistic gamer profile names. In the bottom section of this page, I'm going to paste in some icons that I found from Icon Finder. I'm going to resize them and put them in the boxes. Then I'm also going to choose the background color, make it a blue. And as a tip, if you want to make it a lighter shade of blue, this is an opacity number here. If you change that to something like 50 or 20%, it will make it a lighter color. Finally, on this page, I'm going to select the whole right sidebar and hit delete. Then I'm going to select the rest of the content and move it across into the middle and position it perfectly. Then I finish this page. The next thing we're going to do is make a duplicate page. So select the page name at the top and hit Command D. This will make a duplicate page. Now we're going to link between the pages. So on the right hand side, select the background to the first button and the white circle. Now drag it down to the second one. We want to make categories look active. So we need to change the colors to make sense. On this one, we're going to change it to white, and on the home, we're going to choose it to gray. Now go back to the home screen and select categories and the icon and group them together. Then hit prototype and drag the white circle again across to the next screen. By default, the action will be set to navigate to. That means we're going to move across to the next screen. Now repeat the same thing for the home icon and the home text. Group it, move it across back to the other screen in prototype mode. Now if you hit preview mode, you should be able to move back and forth between the two screens. Now we need some content. We're going to create some categories. Head on over to dashboard two on the left hand side. Then select these top four colored squares. Copy them, 
go back to dashboard three and paste them into place on your design. You can also go ahead and delete the illustrations and maybe go back to Undraw and copy and paste some ones that make sense. This will be the content for this page. The final thing we're gonna do is get our prototype ready. Head on over to prototype in the top right and where it says background color, change it to white. Then switch to preview mode and hit share prototype. In this box, you can then copy a link and then you can share that link with anyone or open it in a browser. Well done, you've made your first prototype in Figma. What we're gonna do next is make a companion app for this. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to take a desktop website and make a mobile version. And we're gonna do this as a prototype now. This part of the tutorial is gonna be really fun. First, we need to get set up. Head up to the top of the screen and hit the little plus icon. This will create you a new document. Then in Figma you get two options. Choose the one on the left, which is a new design file. The first thing we need to do is create a canvas. Go up to this icon at the top of the screen and click it, or you can press A for artboard. An artboard is essentially a screen. On the right hand side, you can see preset screens. So you can choose whatever size you want. In here, you can see a list of devices. So choose the one you want. For this, I'm going to choose iPhone 13. This sets up our first artboard to work off. Now we're going to create the menu screens. Head on back to the previous file and select the whole of the left hand sidebar. Click copy and then move it across into this new file. We now need to duplicate our artboard. Select the name and hit command D. Then position the sidebar onto this new artboard. This is gonna be our menu. Now we need another page. Select the first artboard, move it across a little bit and hit duplicate again. Then go back to your menu screen. There's no selected state in this, so we need to remove the background and change all the buttons to make sure that they're all gray. Then select the icon of the text, hit command G to group it. Then go to prototype mode, hit the little white circle and move it across to the screen that you want to link it to. Now, if you hit the line that it's drawn, it brings up the menu screen for the actual connection. And it's really important that you get this right. This is where loads of errors occur. Make sure it says on tap and navigate to. If you have any errors with the link and give you file later, always go back, click these links and check this is on top. This is where 90% of the errors come through. Then do this again for the categories page to the other screen. Now we need a menu icon that works to link us to the menu. Go onto the top bar and hit the little rectangle icon. This will bring a drop down up and this is where you can select the line tool. Now zoom in and draw three lines. This is called a hamburger icon on apps and it usually means the menu's coming in. So select all your lines, hit Command G to group them. Again, go to prototype. Again, move it across to your menu screen and make sure that it says on tap navigate to. Copy this menu onto both screens. Now we need some content. Go back to your other design file with the desktop app in it and click and drag and copy the hero. Paste the hero into the new file, then right click and click ungroup. Now we need to resize it so it fits on our screen. So select the background layer and move it across and reshape it using the corner points to size. Then select the text and do exactly the same. You can move the button into place. Now you can move the illustration. If it's hidden and you can't see it, in your layers panel, you can see your individual layers. Select it, then that will automatically select the box and you can click and drag and move the illustration into place. Next, we're gonna get some content for the categories page. Head on over to your other design and go to your categories page. Then select the elements you wanna do across. In this example, I'm just gonna bring two of the boxes across. So I'm gonna select the elements from within the boxes, copy and paste, and paste them into place on your mobile design. Next, we're gonna grab the content for the popular section. So copy and paste all the boxes, then head on back to your mobile design, but you'll see the page isn't big enough, so we need to make our artboard longer. So hit the name in the top left of your artboard. This will select the actual artboard grid and then using the bottom square at the bottom in the middle, click and drag downwards. This will make your artboard vertically taller and just mean it will scroll on your mobile. Then copy into place and move everything so you then have your next section. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the top gamer section. So go on over to your other design, copy and then paste it into place. Now I want to show you some alignment options. So if you want to align things perfectly, there's some great tools in Figma for that. So select two boxes that you want to align. Then in the top right hand corner, you'll see these options. Now these are alignment principles. So you can align 
all the boxes to the top you can align them to the bottom you can center align them you can space them evenly so play around with these alignment tools i use them all the time it's very important when making designs that things align that's one of the first things i look for and it's something that you can tell a professional designer from someone who's just learning now for this final section we're going to grab the three boxes paste them into place on our design we're going to make our artboard bigger to fit them and then we're going to stack them vertically but we're going to distribute them this time. So select all three of them, then at the top right, hit this button, which is distribute, and then distribute evenly. This will make sure that the spacing is perfect between them. Then the final thing I'm going to do is just neaten up this mobile menu screen. So I'm going to bring the illustration across from the other file, then line everything to make sure it looks perfect. Now you can hit preview mode. Now in preview mode, you'll see a virtual iPhone and you'll see the website that we've just created. I'll scroll up and down. This is looking super cool, but now I wanna show you how to preview this on your device. So in the right hand corner, hit share prototype, then copy this link. Now paste this link onto your mobile phone. This will then launch the website that you've just made in a browser and you'll be able to preview it and you can send it to your friends or just check it out. It's really good when you're designing mobile apps to check them on your actual device first and there'll be things that are slightly different on your device than the actual virtual one on screen and this is a great place to find them and just keep on tweaking. Guys, I really want to share with you Figma communities. Once you've logged into Figma, in the top left hand corner, hit Explore Community. This has some amazing resources for new designers, even experienced designers. It's split up into different sections. You can see plugins. These are apps built right into Figma. You can see the top ones here. So there's even one for Unsplash where we had all our images from. You can get them straight within Figma now. And there's other ones such as material design icons, which is a massive library of Google icons. And you can even export your Figma file to HTML to help developers start building your site for real. Moving across the navigation bar at the top, you can see design systems here. In addition to the one that we've got, there's design systems for Apple. If you want to design a mobile app, or even if you want to design an app for an Apple Watch, the design systems are in here, and this saves you so many hours designing them, it's unreal. I would have loved this research when I was in university. There's also wireframes at the top here. This is really useful for when you're designing a full app and you want to quickly prototype it. You can check out some of the top wireframes in here and it saves you loads of time and you can quickly mock up what the experience of an app like from start to finish. I really encourage you to take a look around Figma communities. I think it's probably the best resource I can give you right now. Guys, I think a really important thing for you to learn now that you know Figma is used for designing websites and apps is to understand where Figma fits in into the actual design process. User experience and user interface design are two separate skill sets and they're involved in the creation of making digital products. I'm going to show you now a short overview of how to design professional digital products and where Figma fits into that journey. UX stands for user experience. This is how a user, who is a person like you or me, interacts and feels about a product that you make. Every company in the world wants people to use the product that they create. And as a UX designer, it's your job to make something that's simple to use solve a clear problem, and put the end user at the center of the design process. UI stands for user interface. User interfaces are what you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. We all know them, we all use them. Everything you see on a computer screen is a user interface. It's the presentation layer to the application. I've seen a large shift over the past 10 years towards what's known as design systems or design languages. A design system is simply just a collection of components that are used to build websites. The goal is reusability. Accessibility means what you design and develop is usable to all people, regardless of disability type or impairment. The UX design process is also known as the user-centered design process, UCD, and is essentially how you make a great digital product. The UCD is split up into four stages, and it's all about understanding the problem you're trying to solve and testing with actual users along the way. The first step in the UCD is research. This is where you really understand the problem that you're trying to solve and who you're solving the problem for. There are lots of different UX techniques that you can use to understand your users. Creating personas allows you and the team to keep the user at the center of the design process. Personas are the answer to the question, who are we designing for? Personas are not just made up out of thin air. 
They are created by researching information about your audience and summarizing it in the creation of one or more persona sheets. UX tasks such as user interviews and surveys can help with research for persona creating and give you some valuable insights you can use during the design process. Your main task during the research phase is to develop a realistic vision of your user. These insights enable you and the team to create user-friendly products based on real-life feedback. The next step in the UCD process is the design phase. This is where you're going to get down on paper an initial design for the project you're working on. The quickest way to get started is to use pen and paper. I normally have a kickoff meeting with designers and other team members to sketch out some initial ideas. The level of detail you need to go into is very low. Don't be afraid to draw boxes and scribble lines for text. The idea is to see the big picture. The small details can come later. Over the years, I've found it better to get collaborating early on in the project and make others feel like they're part of the design process. When working on paper, it's much easier to throw away and make changes. Once you have an idea of what you're going to create, the next step is a basic prototype. The goal should be to have something usable and test it early on with potential users. Having a workable prototype early on is also a great thing to show stakeholders within the business to make sure that you're on the right track. Guys, this is where Figma goes in now. You could either design your wireframes in Figma or your high fidelity prototypes with your images. It covers the whole spectrum, but this is where it goes in into the design process. The next step is testing and this is vital. The difference between the first design of your product and what makes it into the world can sometimes be night and day, and this is all down to user feedback. Just imagine your first design is a draft, and then once you start showing it to people and getting feedback, this will change. There are a lot of different techniques for gathering feedback on your design. If you work for a large company, you may have in-house testing facilities. Normally, there will be someone from the business who has a list of tasks for the user to perform, this can be quite eye-opening as you get to see how your design performs in real life and it soon becomes obvious where the problems are. The next step after you have incorporated all of this feedback into your design is the development process. Your design will be broken down into small pieces and every little detail discussed as a team and documented ready for development. A lot of people ask, do you need to know code to be a UX designer? You may get a lot of different answers, but from my experience, you don't. Personally, I know the basics of HTML and CSS, and that's about it. As a junior designer, you don't need to know code, as this is actually a different job. In every place I've worked, as part of the team, there are actual front-end developers who specialize in this. A front-end developer will take your design and make it come to life. They will put it together in code for whatever type of product you're working on. If you're designing a website, then this will be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you're designing an app, then this will be different. There may also be Java developers, which can be confusing because Java and JavaScript sound the same, but they're actually two entirely different code languages. Many tools I've built have had multiple front-end and Java developers working together over many months to create. This is why I believe you don't need to know code. It might be nice to know, but it certainly isn't necessary. Once your product has been developed and launched to the world, there's still one more thing to look at, and that's analytics. When you create a website, for example, there's a tiny bit of code that you get from Google that you can put on your website and this tracks all the interactions. This is so useful as a designer to see how things are going. You can see things like how many people visited your site, where they clicked, where they came from, how long they spent on each page, and find out where they leave the site from. Now is the time to collect all of this data and package it together ready for improvements further on. As a designer, this is really fun and interesting and it's a step not to be forgotten. The user-centered design process is a loop. All of your analytics can now go back into the research phase to discover new problems and things that can be improved on your site. You can keep making your product better and better and now have a framework to do it in. Now it's time for the next steps in your journey. I want to big up some of the courses that I've made, so check them out in the description. I'll leave the links there, along with all the other links that I've mentioned in this tutorial. I've made a great introduction to UX design. The video is here. You want to watch it and you'll get up and running as quickly as possible. It's got everything in one place that you need to know about UX design to get started. So check it out. I'm out.